So guys, good morning. Welcome to my Farm 24 video. If you are new to this YouTube channel, um, my name is Josh. I'm trying to shut a gate. I think it's shut. My name's Josh. I work here at Northwick um, in Mid Devon. We are an agricultural research institute, um, as well as a lot of farming activity that you'd find on lots of other farms around the UK. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just take you around on a little short video and show you what we do here, mainly just on the farm, the animals and the cropping. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the science as well. The first job of the morning here today, I've just moved this bunch of cattle here, which are our replacement heifers, um, onto some new grass because the field they were on, they had eaten it all. You might be able to notice on that cow there, that I just zoomed in on her head, she's a little white ear tag um, beside her yellow management tags. So we run stabiliser cattle here. We have about 150 suckler cows and then keep all the followers to fatten up uh, and then keep about 30 to 35 heifers for replacements as well. The little white tags in the ears, that um, indicates, um, I want to say the purity of the breed, but that's not really the right descriptive word, but with the stabiliser cattle, they have um, different levels to the breed, depending on, again, the purity, probably not the right word. So a white is known as an F5. So an F5 is at the top of the chart. Um, below that you have F4, 3, 2, etc. Um, right down to F1. I think I'm right in saying we only have F5s and F4s. There might be a couple of F3s running about, but it's mainly white ear tags I can see here. So we are going towards getting um, a uh, all F5 herd of stabilizers. We do have a few Hereford cows knocking about still, older ones. Um, the herd was only switched over to stabilizer um, not that long ago. So there are some Hereford cows running around as well but any Hereford calves don't get kept as replacements. So it's all stabiliser heifer replacements. And here, for example, she's got a green ear tag, which I believe is an F4. Um, and then the next one down is an orange, is an F3, but can't see any of those anywhere. So yeah, we have about somewhere in the region of 400 head of stock on the farm. So we have the 150, I think we've got about 155 cows at the moment. Um, 35 replacement heifers. Well, there's 32 in this group. There was three that weren't big enough to go to bull. Uh, we've got four stabilizer bulls. Um, and then we have also got 50, what have we got? 50 odd um, bought in calves. They're a different breed. Some of those are Angus cross dairy calves and some of them are Hereford cross dairy calves um, that are on a little experiment that I will take you to in a minute. So. Yeah, that's sort of an introduction to the cows. That one looks like a Hereford, but it is a stabilizer. It's got, a, it's got an F5 tag in his ear. Um, yeah, they're a very nice breed. They're very quiet. They're really, really good converters of grass to beef, which is the primary reason of having them here. And uh, yeah, they do a good job. Right, on next little job this morning, just checking some lambs here. The shepherd's actually away today. I'm just walking around a field of lambs. We have just recently weaned the ewes and lambs. So the ewes are now having their dry period um, before going back to the ram later on this year. Hopefully the lambs are motoring on on the grass. They've nearly eaten out this field. It was probably a bit too, uh, probably a bit too long, the grass in here for them really. Um, but they've done a very good job of eating it down. What we'll do is we'll just walk around, make sure they're all looking all right. and. Uh, yeah, just give them a good check one today. This here is not a lamb. This is my uh, Cocker Spaniel Gus. I know he said Springer Spaniel. Um, he comes to work with me every day. Absolutely loves the farm. And he's not fussed by sheep, which is great. A lot of dogs would go off and chase the sheep, but he's not too worried. So we have about 500 ewes here on the farm. Um, they're split into three different groups. Well, two main groups, but three groups. Um, we have what are called the SRF, Small Ruminant Facility Sheep, um, which are the ones that uh, have a bit more of the science work done to them. 
Um, so there's 150 in the SRF, split into blue and green group. Again, I'll explain a little bit more about that when we go back home in a minute. Um, and then the other 350-ish, uh, 330-odd, are farm sheep, um, which we just sort of keep commercially and keep the numbers up. So these guys here have all come from farm sheep. Um, the ones that are on the science ground always stay on science ground. Even when they're weaned, the ewes go to one part of the ground and the lambs go to another part. But I will I'll explain more about that when we get back to the home farm. So I'll just walk around and give these guys a bit of a check over. Um, I don't think I said, we, we keep Suffolk Cross mules. So that's what we got. We've just had the replacements come a few days ago. Um, so I'll show you those in the shed in a minute as well. And uh, yeah, that is uh, some of our lambs. So I'm now over at one of our farms called Rowden. This is where we house our platform cattle in the winter in these three sheds behind me. They're all identical. They all hold, well, they all house 30 animals uh, a year each, plus, plus some returners. I'll explain more about that again when we get back to the platform. But um, they're actually all empty by the middle one at the minute. So this is the brown house. This one's known as, one on the end there is the blue and this other end is the green. They are purely management group names. Um, they don't really have any meaning to the name at all. The animals in this shed uh, will stay in until they are finished. They don't go outside, they don't graze after they are weaned. Um, so they will be calved. They'll stay with their mums till weaning, outside grazing. And then once they're weaned into this shed, um, sort of October time, they will stay in here until they are finished fat. So the 30 that came in here last winter, there are nine left and they will all be um, probably finished within the month of August. So what we do is we come over every morning, they get fed sort of once every three days at the moment uh, with a round bale and um, four kilos a head of barley. Um, what well, we come, come over and push that in in the mornings, make sure they're right. If they need straw, we'll bed them up. We've got the straw chopper over here. Um, and yeah, just make sure that they're doing all right. Our cattle get handled a lot, so they're all quite inquisitive and friendly. Um, they always want to come and see what's going on. Uh, I fed these guys yesterday, so they got loads of food. So I'll fork all that in a minute, make sure it's um, in front of them so they can get to it. Our platform cattle, such as these guys, get weighed once a month. Um, keep an eye on their growth rate and to see how they're getting on. And these guys are looking well. So there's a couple of smaller ones in this group, but the bulk of them will be finished. Um, probably this month now in August um, and then we'll start again in October with 30 new calves in each shed this one that one and the one over there so all together we are farming somewhere in the region of 300 hectares it's about 750 acres um, a large chunk of that would be woodland we recently planted some more trees um, in some poorer fields for like an agroforestry type thing um, so it's a fair fair sized farming operation it's all spread out across about four or five different sites. So we spend quite a long time traveling around each day, checking stock, um, doing field work, various things like that. This farm here in the winter, it sort of keeps one person occupied until lunchtime, feeding up each shed um, every morning. Each shed has its own silage pit and uh, also its own dung midden at the back of each pit. So probably takes a bit longer than uh, a commercial unit would because we like to keep all the silage has got to be separate, all the dung stays separate. And uh, yeah, it just takes a bit longer to do it that way. So we're now on another part of the farm where we keep some of our younger cattle. So these guys here are dairy cross calves that were bought in, um, actually on milk at the time when we bought them in, so we had them quite young. Um, and they're now over on this piece of ground which we call technograze. Now what technograze is, is these guys are in a cell. You can see there's an electric fence here, another one over there. Um, they get moved every day. So I'll let them into this cell now in a minute. Um, there are three groups of six cattle at the moment on sale. So there's one here, one at the top of the field and one on the far side right over the side of the hill. that have been moved every day. The rest of the cattle, so what's that 18? There's another about 40 cattle here that are just on set stocking so they can roam the rest of the field and graze wherever they want, whenever they want. And what's really good about that is you can compare the likes of cell grazing and strip grazing like we're doing here to set stocking side by side. We get all the animals in at least once a month and weigh them so you can compare the two systems that are going along. And uh, we're, we're in a bit of a mini heat wave here in Devon at the moment. You can see behind me it's a complete dust bowl on the uh, set stock stuff. But the cell graze is nice and green. So these guys, they go in there for 24 hours, eat the best of it, and then move on. They can see even down here, 
this is all gone yellow and dusty and it's you know died off whereas this stuff here is still green so they they really they don't hammer the ground 24 hours move 24 hours move uh, keeps them going quite nicely along the other side of their fence so about there somewhere there's a little black drinker so there's a water line that runs along down the fence there's a drinker with about 20 foot of pipe on it and then every couple of days we just move the pipe to the next tap uh, so their drinker goes with them they're quite well trained other cows so every morning when you come and pick up this white handle put it back out of the way they know exactly where they're going onto their new bit of grass And then what I'll do now is I'll pick up that fence, which was their back fence from yesterday, and I'll put it above this fence so that it's ready tomorrow to move them into their next paddock. All right, so I'm back at the home farm now on what we call our blue farm platform. So the cows are actually right at the top of the field there underneath the, uh, underneath the hedge in the shade. So I said I'd give you a brief overview of the farm platform. There's a lot of information about it on the Rothamsted Research website, so feel free to go there and have a look. But in, uh, in simple terms, we have the blue farm platform. So that is uh, 20 hectares 20 hectares of um, grass with a lot of clover, high clover content, which is what these guys are there. You can't really see them are grazing at the moment. We have the green farm platform, which is 20 hectares again of permanent pasture. Um, again, with another 30 animals on it. Um, I've been and checked them this morning. Um, and then we have uh, what is known as the brown farm platform. Those are the guys that stay indoors. So there's those nine left in the shed that you saw earlier. Now they were on grass up until three years ago. This is the third year of cropping. Um, so we're now got 20 hectares of uh, milling oats this year, Muscani milling oats on an area where there would have been another group of cattle which are on a high sugar variety of grass. Uh, but that's now gone into arable and we're rearing 30 of the animals indoors on an intensive system to compare that to it all as well. From our sort of point of view, what we see every day the permanent pasture can stick the weather a lot better. Um, there's more grass there at the moment. Now we're in this sort of mini heat wave. We've not had rain for weeks. Um, the clover does dry out a lot. So these guys were grazing in here up until a couple of days ago. They've absolutely skinned that. And now they're on this. It won't last them very long. And uh, we might have to possibly start feeding these guys some bales in the field. Permanent pasture seems to stick it a lot better. Um, we always get a bigger silage yield off the permanent pasture um, than we do this, the clover stuff. Um, but on the flip side of that, the silage you make on this ground with the clover in it is absolute rocket fuel in the winter for the cattle. They always do better in the winter. So, um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons for both systems, definitely. Um, each farm platform carries 30 cattle, which are up there under the trees. It has 150 ewes and their lambs as well. Uh, and then we make all the silage for those cattle also on that platform. Uh, and it all stays in house. So if you're, if you're a blue farm platform, cow you will eat blue farm platform silage in the winter you'll graze blue farm platform ground uh, and the dung that they produce will get spread back onto the blue farm platform um, so that's a brief overview again if you want to know any more about it the Rothamsted research website probably give you a lot more detail than I can um, the other neat thing about it is uh, the farm platform areas have all got French drains running around the outside of them so the water that is coming off the fields is all gathered into French drains and then it goes into flumes. There's one right down in the corner of the field over there, you probably can't see it. Um, so that you can know how much water is coming off the field, you know the nutrient content of the water, various other things. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure whether that data is available, it might well be online, but have a look. Right, so we are now down on our um, other area of a farm platform. It was known as the red area when it had cattle on it. Um, so I guess we can call it the red farm platform. Um, so this is our winter oats. They are pretty well fit to combine. I bought the moisture meter so we can test them in a minute. But um, hopefully they will go for milling. We got 50 acres of them. There's some here. Uh, this is our biggest field. That's about 15 acres. There's another 10 acre field there below. And then they're spread out with the rest of the platform. Some are down in the valley. And then there's some other side of the road over there. It only gets artificial fertilizer, um, hasn't got any, hasn't had any dung in the last three years. There will of course be a residue from when the cattle were on it three years ago, but um, we're into year three of a five year initial um, period to see how we get on. The first two years we grew wheat, 
Um, it was doing the first year was really really well. We missed the harvest period. Well, we missed the optimal harvest period, um, unfortunately. So we didn't make human grade spec, or we didn't meet milling spec for that. So that went for feed. Uh, and then the second year, I believe we did meet the milling spec. So the oats are looking really really well. As I say, tomorrow the combine is coming to cut them. Um, yeah, we'll do a little moisture check quick. So here I have um, a sample bag. This is gonna be my makeshift combine. Rub it all together, get them out of their husks. There's a little hole in the cap, so that's how much you need to test. You fill that little hole up with whatever crop you're testing. Sample there now, so what we do is we fill up hole on the top of the moisture meter there so that is nine mil worth of crop put it in the top of the moisture meter and start screwing it on I'm going to turn it on it will load up so it's already selected for oats so you've got to select the crop type you want to test grind it right down so the lid is on tight and then you press OK to test the crop. Now we want this to be about 14% before it goes through the combine. Um, the combine nearly always add a percent of moisture onto it. And that's measured at 16.4. So it's before 10 o'clock in the morning here at the moment. By mid-afternoon, it will probably be dry. We'll have all day to dry today and most of tomorrow before the combine gets here. So I am... Um, happy enough that it'll be correct for when the combine gets here. So we actually have a local contract to do our combining. It's about the only thing we don't do ourselves. We've got our own forage harvester, mowers, baler, um, plow. We borrow a drill to do our drilling. Uh, everything else really is done in house uh, apart from the combining. But that is sort of a typical morning here on the farm. We do all the stock checking first, make sure they're all right. If there's any problems, we've got the rest of the day to deal with them. Um, obviously this time of year, we're getting ready for harvest, um, which is imminent tomorrow. And then we'll soon be in to second cut silage as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look round um, here at Northwick today uh, for Farm 24. If you wanna know any more about the farm, I've got loads of videos on YouTube. We've been doing videos for about two years now. Um, you can go back and have a look at all the things we do. There's loads on machinery, cattle, all the various bits and pieces we get up to. If you like the videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like, that really helps out. Uh, and if you want to see any more of what goes on here on a bit more of a daily basis, I always put a picture or a reel up on Instagram and TikTok most days so you can see exactly what we are up to. But from, uh, from me and Gus, thanks for watching the video. Enjoy Farm 24 and uh, yeah, see you on the next one. Cheerio.